This is your complete guide to fitting a BL Touch to the Ender 5, covering both Vanilla Marlin as well as TH3D. When I reviewed this Ender 5, I really enjoyed it. It's been a reliable performer since then, and I haven't really had to modify anything to keep it printing really well. This printer, like so many from Creality, however, has a slightly warped bed. Not too bad, but I know there's other people out there that have it far worse than this. Therefore, I present to you this guide on how to fit a BL Touch to the Ender 5. Now, my plans for this printer are far grander. I think the cube frame makes it an ideal candidate to enclose and make an ABS-specific machine. But that's all in the future, so let's start with the printed parts we need to fit our BL Touch. Long term for this printer, I'm planning to retain the factory metal cage around the fan and hot end. Therefore, I've picked a BL Touch mount that will bolt straight onto the left hand side without any other modification. The Ender 3 and Ender 5 are quite similar, so I started by printing out an Ender 3 mount, but I discovered that although the bolts are the same, the belt mounting system is different and this got in the way with the Ender 3 mount. Fortunately, on Thingiverse, I found two other designs, one 3 mils lower than the other, and I printed them both to see which one was going to work out best. Firstly, we can see that they're narrower in the lower piece, and therefore they clear the belt, so that's a big tick for either design. To fit either of these mounts, you simply need to undo the two bolts on the top left that hold on the metal fan shroud. Loosen them and then screw them out, being careful not to drop them anywhere delicate or where you can't find them. After this, the fan shroud should come completely loose on the left hand side. Put your BL Touch mount into place and redo up the same two bolts to hold it firmly in place. You don't want to risk this coming loose and making your nozzle slam into your bed. I pushed my BL Touch extension cable through the nominated slot and plugged it into the BL Touch, ready to complete a test fit. The one you're seeing here is a 3mm lower version and I bolted it from underneath using a washer and the nuts as supplied with the BL Touch to hold it firmly into place. Some people like to use the included springs when they're mounting but I've always done it rigid and I've never had any problems. Next you want to home the bed because we want to have the nozzle just touching the top of the print surface. We also want the nozzle in the middle of the print volume and we're aiming for a gap between the bed and the tip of the probe of around 3mm. Here I successfully used a 3mm hex key and I didn't need to do any shimming to get that distance correct. If your gap was too big, you'd have to use washers or something like that to move the BL Touch down until you got that nice 3mm gap between the tip of the probe and the top of the bed. That's the printed parts out of the way, so let's proceed with the physical install. And a quick note, the extension cable I used on this was 1.8m, but I think a 1.5 would be fine because I had just a little bit left over. The five wires from my BL Touch were just hanging loose, but really they needed to go inside this shroud to be carried neatly down to the main board. I started by cutting the cable ties that were holding everything tight, and then I came to the base, and by now I've developed a reasonable technique for pushing these through. If you compress and squeeze the sleeve, it'll balloon out, creating the room to slide up the cable a little bit further, and then you keep doing this until you shimmy it from one end to the other. After not too long, it'll come out the top, you can plug it back into the BL Touch and use cable ties like it was before to hold it correctly to the PTFE tube. Time to access the main board, which on the end of 5 is on the underside of the machine. Tip it back carefully and undo the four bolts holding on the bottom cover. When you take off the last one, support it carefully, the main board cooling fan will be plugged in, so you need to unplug this before removing the metal cover. Feed your BL Touch cabling through the same hole that leads into the electronics cover as all the other wiring. The BL Touch replaces the Z end stop switch, so you need to locate the plug labeled Z and clear away the hot glue holding it into place before you get a set of pliers and carefully pull it out. Now this will vary from extension loom to extension loom, but my one came with a 3 pin for the BL Touch, but the factory is only a 2 pin, therefore we've got a tiny alteration to make. With these JST connectors, there's a little metal tab that you can push down on as you pull the pin out from behind. You need to remove both the ones from the factory plug as well as the BL Touch plug and then reinsert them and they should click back into place and be secure and ready to use. Once this is done, it becomes plug and play, but you do need to pay attention to which side the black and white wires are on. I insert them so the white wire is next to the other white wires and the black is next to the other black wires. We're finished with the old wiring to the end stop switch, so you can remove the wiring and the switch altogether. 
For this guide, I'm once again going to be using a pin 27 board, which means you don't need to cut any wiring. There are links for these from a range of countries in the description. Like the other connectors, there's a little bit of hot glue to pry off so you can pull out the ribbon cable plug. Just be sure to support the main board while you pull out this fat plug. The pin 27 board plugs right back into that slot, but be careful to have it centered. It's easy to misalign two of the pins. The ribbon cable plugs right on top of that. There are variations in pin 27 boards, so please read the wiring diagram on yours and wire your plug accordingly for the BL touch. Just like the JST connector on the black and white wires, this is a DuPont connector and by lifting the little tab, you can remove the individual wires, change the orientation and plug them back in again. You can see here for me that I needed to swap two of them to get everything to match my pin 27 board. Make sure the little tabs are pushed down so they don't come loose. The second BL touch cable should now plug right in. Please double check, triple check your wiring so you don't blow up your main board. I reintroduced two cable ties in the same places as before to tidy up the BL touch wiring and I took the excess and cable tied that out of the way as well. You can see I have a little bit of excess and I'm guessing a 1.5 meter extension cable would be just about perfect. Your final job is to measure the offset distance between the tip of your nozzle and the tip of the probe for X and Y. I measured 44 and 16. That's the physical install done. And don't be fooled by the fact that the probe deploys and stows twice when you power it up. You still need to alter the firmware. Now in this video, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently and that I'm going to show you how to get this done on vanilla Marlin, following on from my previous guide for the Ender 5, as well as TH3D, which has now added BL Touch support, which is really easy to use. If you wanna know more about the differences between vanilla Marlin and the TH3D version, I previously made a video on that, which you can check out above. You need a bootloader flash to follow this guide, so watch the previous video, download the linked vanilla Marlin configuration files and follow the instructions to get it installed. After that, we'll open up the Arduino IDE. Here we are inside Vanilla Marlin. We're gonna make roughly a dozen changes, mainly in configuration.h, and the best way to find each section is to go Control or Command F to find. The first thing we're gonna search for is end stop pull up. Now we're gonna scroll down to the last one in this section, define end stop pull up Zmin probe, and we're going to uncomment that. We're going to scroll a little bit further than that and we notice the one here that says Z min probe end stop inverting. With a genuine BL touch I found that it can go either way but if you're using a clone you might need to change this one from false to true. Next up we're going to search for BL touch. And as you might have guessed we're going to uncomment that to enable it and then inside this if statement we're going to add a new piece of code. So we have hash define servo zero, that's a zero there, not an O, underscore pin gap 27. And this is of course, if we're using a pin 27 board or splicing pin 27 as it is on the ribbon cable. Generally, I find the process a little bit slow, so I like to uncomment this and lower the value down to 100. Next, we're going to search for X underscore probe offset. That'll bring us to this map here, and our probe was to the left and the front, so we're gonna have negatives for each value. What I measured on mine was minus 44 and minus 16. We're going to keep on scrolling down a little bit, and once again, I like to up our speed in between probing from 8,000 to 10,000. Next, we're going to search for min software and stop Z. We're going to add a comment to this, and this will allow us to go below zero on the z-axis when we're finding our correct offset. Now we're going to search for auto bed leveling. We're gonna scroll past the descriptions and uncomment the middle one, define auto bed leveling by linear. One more on this page, and that's to enable Z safe homing. This ensures that before Z is homed, that X and Y are first homed, so it knows where the middle of the bed is to deploy the probe. And this of course means that the probe won't be off the bed and cause the nozzle to crash into the bed. It's two more quick changes and they are now in configuration underscore ADV.h. To get to them, we're gonna search for baby. 
Now baby stepping by default is already enabled, but there's two changes I like to do here. They are optional, but I think they improve the experience a lot. Firstly, the multiplicator I like to put up to 10, otherwise it takes a lot of turning to actually make any difference. Secondly, I like to uncomment and enable define baby step Z probe offset. This means that as you're baby stepping, you're also setting your Z probe offset. And when you store it to EEPROM, it's ready to go for the next time. We're going to make sure we have Sanguino selected and 18 mega 1284p 16 megahertz. We're going to select our board and we're going to attempt to upload, although we expect it to probably be too big and have to disable some other features. We can see here that we're a little over 9,000 bytes over, so time to disable some features that we don't often use. Probably the easiest thing to do is to switch back to configuration.h and search for slim. Let's uncomment this and see how we go. This is going to remove a lot of options from the LCD, but you can still set these options manually in your G-code or when you connect via USB to a laptop. Not quite there, but we are extremely close. We're at 100%, so we need to lose just a little bit more. And the next piece of low-hanging fruit is in configuration underscore ADV, and we're going to search for Arc. This feature is very rarely used when 3D printing, so we're going to comment it out, and we should be good to upload. Third time lucky, and we got there. Marlin will undoubtedly add new features in the future, making it harder to fit this on the 1284p. Therefore, to future-proof this video, the following list can be used as a guide as to what else you can comment out to save further space. I prefer the complete control of Vanilla Marlin, but if you're looking for an easy time in setting up, you can use TH3D instead. You still need a bootloader, so watch my previous video up until 4 minutes 36, download the TH3 unified firmware from the link in the description, and then continue onwards from here. We're in the newest version of TH3D, and as it says here, we need to switch to configuration.h. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to go Control F and search for Ender 5. That'll bring us down to this Ender 5 section, and by default, it will be commented, but you need to delete the two slashes at the start, and now everything will be configured for Ender 5. Next, we're going to come down and uncomment out Custom Probe. This will work in conjunction with the BL Touch. So that's the next thing we'll search for, which will bring us down to the BL Touch section. We're going to uncomment define BL Touch and also uncomment define servo zero underscore pin 27. As it says, we need to enter our custom probe offset in the section above. So let's scroll up a little until we get to the section, if enabled, custom probe. Now I measured my probe to the left, 44. You can see it's a minus here, so I'm going to change this value to minus 44. And I measured my probe out in front by 16. So as we can see, it's a minus, so that's going to become minus 16. We need to make sure we have our correct COM port selected. We need to make sure we have our board set to Sanguino 1284p. And we need to make sure we have our programmer set to AVRSIP Mark II. After this, we can simply click Upload. We're almost there, and whichever firmware you decided to use for this, the steps coming up are exactly the same. So let's get on with modifying our Start G code and calibrating our Z offset. Whenever you're adding any form of auto bed leveling, it's a great idea to do your first home with the bed right, right down the bottom. This will give you enough room to put your hand up to trigger the probe in case it doesn't work and that will prevent the nozzle from smashing into the bed. If it is working, then proceed to home a second time and everything should work as it's intended. If your probe doesn't stop the homing, the first thing you should reverse is the black and white wires into the mainboard from the BL Touch. Regardless of your slicer, after the G28 in your start G code, you need to add G29 which will initiate the auto bed leveling sequence. To set the Z offset correctly, we need a test print, and I like to use this big X which I've previously shared with my patrons. You can find similar files on Thingiverse, or just fire up Tinkercad, create an X, and download the STL. Do a non-uniform scale to stretch it out and get it only one layer thick. When you start your first test print, you'll notice that the probing sequence takes place by probing a 3x3 grid. As the first layer goes down, access the menu and go to Control, Motion, Probe Z Offset. 
turning it to the left will lower the tip of the nozzle and that's likely what you need to do. This adjustment should be noticed instantly by the turning of the Z axis. As with any leveling, you're aiming to get it low enough that it sticks and squishes out just the right amount. Once you're happy, from the control menu, scroll down and go to store settings and it will be saved for the next print. Here's my finished X and you can see I didn't quite have it low enough because all of the individual strands weren't squished enough to merge with each other. I lowered the Z offset, did a second print and this time it worked out perfectly. I've stored these settings in the EEPROM for the future but I can always do little adjustments as necessary. Now I noticed my X was not in the center of the bed using TH3D, so I played by uncommenting the home adjust, but the expected changes did not occur, so I ended up sliding in my end stops to get my prints back into the very middle of the bed. And with that, everything was complete. That's our install done, and for me, I've done several test prints and everything is working like I would expect. There's plenty more coming up for this printer, so if you don't want to miss it, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.